So in MVVM, usually the view model contains behavior, right? Mapping behavior, it maps the details and it exposes observable values. So when those values change, the UI reacts immediately. For example, if you move here and you edit this place, when you go back, you wanted to see it already in there. So there's been a change. Every time there's a change, the view model will provide observable state and it will notify all the observers about the change. We show that in the program that you can do with simple closures in simple cases, or you can use combine or RX Swift, something like this to create more complex observation patterns. All right, so this is usually what we do. Right now you have only a view model that is just data, data with no behavior. Because probably in this case, you didn't have to update anything. You didn't have to provide observable data. But usually in MVVM, you will provide observable properties because those proper, those values change over time and you want the UI to always be up to date. And that's one of the key components of MVVM, the view models expose observable data. So right here, the, what you have is just a, a struct, right? It's just immutable data. And this is this kind of view models is the same as view models you see in MVP and MVC. Right? Even though like in MVC doesn't mean you don't have view models, you do. You have your models, but then you convert them to something that can be passed to the UI, right? And it's just pure data. The big difference from MVC and MVVM is that the view model exposes observable yes. properties. Properties, yes. This way the UI will bind itself to the view model. So the view model doesn't need to know about the view. You invert the dependency there. So that's a key difference. So it doesn't mean you're using MVVM here. It could be just MVC with the simple data. So there's no binding, right? Because there's no observable data. It's just setting values, reading, not binding. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. 